Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Mark. I want to thank you all for having me today. And I want to thank Jeff and Jennifer uh, for opening up their house last night and opening uh, me up to this community, as well as Matt uh, for opening me up and introducing me to all of you. Uh, thank you for taking the time here today. I want to talk a little bit about a journey. Um, and I'll start off by saying, uh, when I explained to my parents four years ago when I joined the organization that I was going to get guys to grow mustaches and women to support them, my dad inwardly had an awesome rocking 70s mustache, but had shaved it off, said yes. Outwardly he said, is that a real thing? Um, so I explained to him at that time, I said, I'm going to be a mustache farmer. That's my job. And you fast forward and, and we talk about Movember in a very fun way. Um, we look at it as a Trojan horse to engage men in a conversation about their health, whether that be their physical health or their mental health. Um, as Matt said, um, we started in 2003 in Melbourne, Australia. Um, we have expanded to 21 countries around the world and have funded over a thousand programs. Um, our community is comprised of uh, grassroots individuals much like the community here. Those that started a conversation wanted to have a conversation about a particular issue uh, and make sure that they were talking to the men and women in their lives about that. So the $715 million actually, which has just, um, just come out uh, in, in terms of what we've raised to date, is the success that we've seen with Movember. Um, but the significance of what we're trying to do uh, with communities like the Peace Love community here, as well as our organizations and communities around the world, is really to engage and change the conversation about men's health. Um, we look at it as how do we engage men in living happier, healthier, and longer lives? The statistics aren't in our favor. Uh, men, on average, globally die five years younger than women. There's no biological reason for that. Um, of the top 10 diseases on the CDC website of how Americans die every year, men lead in nine of those categories. Uh, we focus on a, a few particular issues. Um, prostate cancer is the second leading cause of cancer amongst men. Uh, 30,000 men in this country alone will pass from that disease this year. 220,000 men will be diagnosed with that disease. Uh, if you take uh, mental health, and these are the scary stats, um, of the 41,000 uh, people who take their own lives in the United States, 30,000, almost 75% of them are men. There's a challenge here, there's a public health crisis that we need to start engaging in. So when we step back from that, we look at our journey over the last 13 years of how we moved from a small conversation in a bar in Melbourne, Australia, two guys sitting down, trying to have a laugh, trying to make something fun, and just challenge each other to grow a mustache to where we are today. It's the journey that we've, um, we've come on that is most critical in our learning and what we've found to be most impactful in how we deliver on the significance of the work that we're trying to do. So I'll give you two examples. Um, one is in, within the uh, prostate cancer space. It's called True North. Uh, True North is this idea of there will be a time when prostate cancer is solvable, that 30,000 men in the US alone uh, will not be dying from that disease. They will survive. Uh, we believe that's in the next 10 years. The challenge with that is, is that these men, while being treated and living a longer life, are dealing with some pretty significant issues, not just the physical health side. And I think if you talk to folks who have gone through cancer or been a partner or been experiencing cancer through someone else, um, often what they talk about is the real challenge is not just what happens physically as they're going through treatment, but everything after that. And that's comprised of both the physical and mental health challenges. If you take a lens of prostate cancer, which is um, a really challenging disease to deal with, um, oftentimes the hidden conversation that's not happening is around the sexual health of that man or the mental health of that man. So oftentimes, and you talk to uh, prostate cancer survivors, often what they'll tell you is if I knew what I'm dealing with now, I might have made different decisions earlier. So what we're investing in globally is a $40 million initiative called True North. And it's the idea around getting everyone that surrounds that individual man who's just been told they have prostate cancer to go on the journey with them and make the decision with them. And that's the intent behind it, is to ask that man, ask that partner, ask that family and that care team, where do we see ourselves in six months? Where do we see ourselves in six years? And where do we see ourselves in 30 years? So ultimately driving at what's the quality of life uh, that this man and their partner and their families define for themselves. So really excited about that particular initiative. Um, as Matt mentioned, the other piece, and 
People don't know Movember for this uh, because we're seen as this fun outward thing, but the serious side of what we're doing is really around moving into the mental health space uh, and focusing on things like prostate, uh, prostate cancer. So when we, we step back from our work on investing in True North and started thinking about what is the next thing that we need to look at, um, we step back to our founding. Um, some of the founders, Adam, uh, who is here in the United States, JC, uh, who is over in the UK, um, had friends, had mates that had uh, suffered from anxiety, depression, some had taken their own lives. Um, all of us are impacted by that in some way, shape, or form. So we, we sat back down early on as we were learning uh, our way through prostate cancer, not just the physical challenges that men are facing with treatment, but also the mental health challenges, and said, what else should we be working on? So we came back to this idea of treating the holistic man. Whatever disease that is, whatever uh, disease impacts that individual man, we need to start moving towards and progressing against each of those. So mental health obviously is critically important to anything that we do. Um, so from our perspective and what we've invested in here in the United States is a, uh, an idea called making connections. Making connections is really driven around the idea of working within communities, uh, building up communities of wellness to really engage them amongst themselves to reduce, uh, in a lot of cases, violence um, that are occurring in those communities that set a boy who becomes a man on the wrong path in dealing with their mental health challenges. So mental health um, for us is, is a new foray in the United States. Um, but what I would say is in uh, 2006, we've actually been investing in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, we do a lot of work in that space and that's been our learning. So this journey that we've been on as a foundation that starts with a fun idea, uses the mustache as a Trojan horse and the success we've seen with the fundraising across our five million community members is really driving towards the significance of the work that we're looking to uncover and ultimately solve for. So if I can leave you with this on a personal level, my own personal journey, um, I'm the son of, of a man who's uh, suffered from depression his whole life. And um, it's important for me, not just as, as someone involved in a, a global foundation to drive at this issue, but um, my hope is when my dad looks at my terrible, terrible mustache 30 days into November, he can hearken back to a time where he had an awesome mustache and uh, ultimately it allows us to then have that conversation that we haven't had for a long period of time but are finally now having. So thank you. Thank you.